Fortnite Chapter 2 comes to an end, and Halo Infinite has its first free event. All that and more, my name's Ethos, and these are your top 5 stories for this week's Free to Play Weekly. Coming in at number 5, Legends of Runeterra's next update, Magical Misadventures, will continue Ava's journey with a trip through the enchanted forests of Ionia, where she'll meet up with some new friends and hopefully will avoid any major mishaps. Riot plans to tease more information about this update over time until it releases on December the 8th. So far, they've revealed that there will be 43 brand new collectible cards, including Grumble Slug, Yordle Captain, and Minion. New information will be available from a couple of sources, including the Legends of Runeterra social pages. Other places to keep an eye include Mobile Analytics and DAC.GG, where full info on each card will be available once they've been revealed. And coming in at number 4, it's almost time to wrap things up for Fortnite Chapter 2. The convergence is complete and the Cube Queen is ready to complete her plan. But there's still some time to stop her and everything will come to a head on December the 4th at 4pm Eastern when players will have one chance and one chance alone to defeat the Cube Queen and save the island. The end game event, titled The End, is one of Fortnite's one and done affairs, meaning that if you miss it, you miss it and you'll just have to watch videos of someone else who was there. With that in mind, Epic encourages players to plan ahead. Gather up 15 other players to queue in and log in up to 30 minutes prior to be sure that you don't miss a thing. Since The End is the official end of Season 2, there might be some things that you might want to get out of the way if you haven't, because if you don't, the associated rewards will be gone. That includes things like the Cube Queen's page quests, completing collections to unlock styles, and trading in any battle stars that you may have have hanging around for some rewards. If you feel like you haven't leveled up enough to take part in this event, Epic has you covered there. Beginning November the 26th, a power leveling event will be available, and that event lasts until November the 29th, so you should be good to go at the end of it so long as you take advantage. And coming in at number 3, the Ministry of Information and Technology in China has temporarily suspended gaming giant Tencent from launching and update its apps in the country. As Game Developer reports via the paywalled South China Morning Post, the measure is being billed as temporary administrative guidance as Chinese authorities have reportedly taken issue with a number of the company's apps for violating regulations and infringing on users' rights. The Chinese government has taken action against gaming several times in the past. In 2018, the country refused to approve new games for about almost half of a year, and just a few months ago, the country's state media compared games to opium for their addictive qualities. It's unclear what caused this current tiff between Tencent and the government, though Tencent has said that it is cooperating with the authorities as its games remain available for download. We are continuously working to enhance user protection features within our app, and we also have regular cooperation with relative government agencies to ensure regulation compliance, the company said. Of course, we'll update you guys as more information comes in about this current situation. And coming at number 2, last week 343 rolled out Halo Infinite's first free event titled Fracture Tenrai. This event featured a samurai-inspired Yorai armor core as well as similarly themed items as part of its 30-tier event pass. It also kicked off a limited time playlist and event challenges. Fractured Tenrai isn't going to be a one and done type of thing however, instead it will have 6 appearances throughout Season 1 with the second coming in January. It's the first of the Fractured stories which offers players a look into how the world of Halo has diverged from what they know in parallel worlds. Each world will have its own unique flavor such as the samurai theme in Tenrai but will maintain the Halo foundation that we're all familiar with. In the Tenrai Fracture, the warlords of various clans, usually at each other's throats, have united to stop the Covenant Barbarians and their glass dragons. As part of this alliance, the Imperial Court has shared the secrets to creating special armor and weapons blessed by the Divine. As noted, this event is 100% free and players can earn some nifty rewards. And since this is occurring many times during Season 1, it won't last very long. In fact, it's only available right now for a week until November the 30th, so it's pretty much on its way out. But don't worry, if you don't manage to complete everything, you will have additional chances to get it done. And finally, coming at number one, your biggest story of the week. It's weird to think that Bungie is about to turn 30, but here we are with me thinking that we kind of exist in a sort of time vortex. Of course, that's not the most important thing here. The important thing is how the company plans on celebrating the big 3-0. As you might expect, the celebration involves in-game content, particular to Destiny 2. What you might not expect is that this is content that you're going to have to purchase. Well, most of it you're going to have to purchase. The company announced the 30th anniversary pack for Destiny 2, which they stated will function as DLC like Beyond Light or Shadowkeep in their most recent This Week at Bungie post. The post also states that since this pack is a type of DLC, it will be accessible exclusively on the platform it's purchased regardless of the cross-safe setup. Meaning if you're one of those folks who like to mix up your gaming platforms since sometime the couch is just more comfortable, you're going to need to buy more than one copy and DLC runs for $25, or it can be purchased as part of the Witch Queen bundle for $100. Now the question that everyone 
everyone's asking is what exactly players will be able to get if they don't opt into this DLC seems to be a tad unclear at this moment and probably won't be sorted out publicly until we get closer to the December the 7th release. What you can expect is a brand new match made mode and probably some other bobbles. And that moves us to the question of the week. With Halo Infinite dropping its first event, let me know in the comment section below what did you think about it? Did you enjoy it? Did you not at all? Did you feel that the way it's formatted is kind of weird and not good? Or are you cool with the way that it's laid out multiple times throughout the season? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And these are your top five stories for this week's Free to Play Weekly. Don't forget to check out MMOBomb.com for giveaways and the latest news. My name's Ethos, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out, everyone.